Hello, ladies. It's Mr. O'Sullivan. And Ms. Townsend. Good morning, ladies. So this is the third part of your project, the New York, New York. The city's so nice, you want to live in it twice. So the directions for this, answer each of the following questions to the best of your ability. This is a group project where you are able to work in groups of two or three, with the exception of the group of four. Remember, this is stage three of your project. So we're expecting that you've already completed stage one and two. Make sure that you complete a stage each week so that you do not fall behind and you must complete stage three with the group you worked with for stage one and two. Only one Google form will be submitted per group. And we're expecting that you will create an equation and construct a graph using technology. If you have not completed stage one or two, then you must complete this independently you cannot move on to stage three without completing stage one and two. And ladies. Reminder, the name and photo associated with the Google oh. account will be recorded when you upload your files and submit this form. So yes, also one of the things that we wanna remind you is that if you didn't do stage one or stage two, you have to do those independently. That is just the way the game is gonna work because you have to do stage one and stage two to do this project. And the majority of the groups have already been created. They were created during the pause days and they were created before the pause. So yes, you need to complete stage one and stage two. The videos for those are on YouTube as well on this channel. And the Google Forms are also on iLearn. There is a little thing that we need to make sure that you are all aware of besides the one Google Form being submitted per group. The only reason Ms. Townsend and I are able to access today's form is because we are not connected to our NYC students account. We are connected to our personal email. So if you look, this is one of my personal emails, Mr. Arsalvin Math at Gmail. So if I wanted to, Ms. Townsend could, create this, could complete this form using our BYW email, that also works, or she can use her personal Gmail. So one of the things that we need to make sure, we are not using our nycstudents.net email for this project. If you are logged into your nycstudents.net email on any of your tabs or any of your browsers, you won't be able to complete the form. So I'm going to ask right now that before you complete the form, you log out of that account from all tabs. Right, Ms. Townsend, because that was the issue that happened when we were doing the Zoom. That is correct. Because if it works for one per, if this form works for one group, then it will work for every single group. You just can't use the nycstudents.net email. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import our email address. So I'm gonna do my Mr. Sullivan. I'm actually not gonna do my Mr. Sullivan math. I'm gonna do my CO Sullivan nine at schools.nyc.gov. And then it is Ms. Townsend and Mr. Sullivan as the group members. So now that we finished that, we're gonna go on to next. This form is gonna look a little differently than the other forms. It's gonna be very chunked. So it's not gonna be like, oh, we're gonna do our student, then our one bedroom, then our two bedroom. It's gonna be, this is the pages for the studio. This page is for the one bedroom. This page is for the two bedroom. But Ms. Townsend, what are we doing today? We're only doing- We're yeah, only the modeling the studio. Why are we only modeling the studio? Because they have to do a one bedroom and a two bedroom. It's the same process. It is the exact same process. And ladies, one of the things that we wanna encourage you to do is make sure that you go back to your part one and part two to get the apartments there that you have listed. One of the things that Ms. Townsend and I noticed though, this is why we're definitely doing a studio, is because a lot of us did not choose a studio. We chose a bedroom or a two bedroom. Ms. Townsend, I've lived in a studio. Can I don't wanna explain my experience with a studio, but can you explain what a studio is? Sure, a studio is generally two rooms, a bathroom and an open space living area. Sometimes you might get a, a separate kitchen, but generally the kitchen is open to the living space and the bathroom is separated. Perfect. So that's different from a two bedroom because you have two separate rooms that are specific, specified for bedrooms or living areas or like sleeping areas, whatever you want to call them. And then you typically have a living room or a living room slash kitchen. Sometimes the kitchen is separate. Um, a yeah. So it's, it's typically called a four room apartment because there's two bedrooms, a bathroom and a kitchen. So studios are typically an open living space and then a separate bathroom. Um, the kitchen's typically in the room. If you're lucky, the kitchen's in a separate room. So that's like a two room studio or a three room studio. Um, and it's a very big open space, very big open space. 
So the studio that Ms. Towns and I are going to be writing an equation for today and modeling through how to do this procedure for is a nice studio in Crown Heights that is actually 1667 per month. And Ms. Townsend, if you look, it's in a very nice part of Crown Heights. It's not far from Prospect Park or the Botanical Gardens. Um, you forgot to use that nice vocabulary word that we like. Oh, it's <laughs> geographically convenient? No, that 1667 is the net effective rent. Good. So I have two free months on my lease. So there are two months where I'm not paying rent or I'm just paying the net effective for that month. So if I look, I'm getting a $2,000 a month apartment for 1667, which in my book, I think is actually a pretty good steal, especially for the location and convenience. Location. For and look at how close it is to the subway. It's close to the Botanic Garden subway, um, Franklin, Medgar Evans, Evers College, Nostrand, and President. So you have four subway lines. And if you look, Oh, I actually am not a huge fan of this building, but we'll still write the equation. It's a big building. It's 72 units. I don't like big buildings. I'd rather tiny walk-ups. It's a, it's a rent-stabilized building, too. Oh, where does it say that? It doesn't, but a, a building with 72 units that's not co-op or condo has to be rent-stabilized in New York. Interesting. Okay, so ladies, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to our Google form. So you should have your studio, one bedroom or two bedroom already picked out. If you don't have a, the correct studio picked out, then please find a new studio because this project is for a studio, a one bedroom and a two bedroom. So the first thing we're gonna do is, if you're stuck on how to write the equation after watching this video, there is another video right here that you can click on. It's the lesson we did a few weeks ago. Um, Ms. Townsend, can you read me this question right here? Sure. Write an equation in Y equals MX plus B form that can be used to model the total rent paid over a given lease term for the studio apartment you chose. The lease term is 12 months. Attach a picture of your work. Make sure you box your final answer. Perfect. So ladies, since uh, we're doing a screen share right now, there is no way for me to attach a picture of my work. My iPad won't be able to handle it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something a little differently. Ms. Towns and I are going to actually write the equation for the studio on the page itself. We're expecting that you do it on a piece of printer paper, scrap paper, whatever. Um, but remember, one of your apartments has to have a fee. We chose a no fee apartment. Okay, so let's begin. I'm going to mark it up. And we know that all equations are written as y equals mx plus b, correct? That is correct. So one of the things that I know is that I know m stands for my slope. And b and stands, stands for, for y-intercept. Your start point. But one of the things that Ms. Townsend and I are expecting you to do is actually to use your slope formula and all that stuff to find out you're missing information. So one of the things that we're looking at is what we're paying at month zero and month one. So Ms. Townsend, at month zero, this is a no fee apartment, correct? That is correct. So I don't have a broker's fee. Nope. So what is it that I have to pay for this apartment? You have to pay the first month's rent and your security deposit. Good, so just so we're on the same page. Our first month's rent will be our 1667, our net effective. But our security and deposit will be the $2,000. Good, I'm gonna color code this. Our security deposit. So this will be our first month rent. You can read this, right? It's legible. It is. Okay, I just want to make sure. So I have our security deposit and our first month's rent. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 2000 plus 1667. And that'll give us, I recommend you take out Desmos. I'm going to take out my nice handy dandy TI-84 plus silver edition. That'll give us 3,667. So at month zero, that actually isn't a bad deal. At month zero, before I even move into this apartment, I'm paying $3,667. Not dollars, okay. dollars. Not bad, especially for how convenient it is in terms of subway, um, subway access. So that's month zero. Now we gotta do month one. 
month one, we've lived in the apartment for a month. We don't have a security deposit. We don't have a broker's fee anymore. We just pay our rent. And if we look, our net effect of rent was 1667. So we've already paid 3667. So we're going to add another 1667. I can't, um, I don't feel like doing math by hand, but I, I would if I wanted to. And then I use my handy dandy TI-84 plus silver edition and I get 5,334. So now I need to find the slope of those two, between those two points because our equation is written as Y equals MX plus B. So there are a bunch of ways we can write slope we can write slope as, is there a way I can erase this? Slope is equal to, I'm going to color code this Miss Townsend, that way we can see where all of our numbers are coming from. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus x1. Um, Ms. Townsend, can you tell me what my second y value is? Sure. It's 5,334. Thank you. So I get y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I get my 5,334. And then what's my first y value? 3,667. And then what's my second x value? One. And my first x? Is zero. Good. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to use our calculator, use our Desmos. I'm going to do 5,334 minus 3,667. And I get 1667. And then Ms. Townsend, what's one minus zero? Oh, that would be one. Yeah, that would be one. Not zero, that would be one. And then I divide, and we know anything divided by one is itself. So I get 1,667 1, as my slope. So I can now write my equation as y equals 1667x plus my y-intercept. And my y-intercept is what I'm paying at month zero. Ms. Townsend, what is it that I'm paying at month zero? $3,667. Good. So that's my equation. Y equals 1,667X plus 3,667. I don't think that's a bad deal at all. Not at all. Department. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow our directions. So I'm gonna hit done because I'm done with this part. Oh my God, you can annotate the whole page. That's so cool. I could have gone down. I didn't have to do all my work up there. Okay, so we're going to take a mental note that our equation is 1667x plus 3667. I'm going to actually write that down somewhere. Get done. And now I'm going to go back here. And after we take a picture of our work, we would attach the file. Now it says, please write the equation you constructed from the previous question. But all we're gonna do is we're just gonna write down the equation. So we're gonna write y equals 1667x plus 30 seconds. That's the equation, right? Yep, that's there you it. Go. Perfect. Now, Ms. Townsend, can you read this question? Identify the slope and y-intercept from your equation. Please use the following sentence starters. The slope of my function is blank, the y-intercept of my function is blank. Use these sentence starters. Don't make your own sentences. Be, use these sentence starters. Don't be, please, please, please. It, please. Don't deviate from the script. So I'm literally going to type that sentence. The slope of my function is, and Ms. Townsend, what's the slope of my function? 1667. Good, the slope of my function is 1667. The y-intercept of my function is- 3667. Thank you. 
Okay, so that is all we are expecting you for that part. We don't want anything else. We just want you to say my slope is, my y-intercept is. All right, now Ms. Townsend, can you read the directions for this part? Using Desmos, create a table of values that is represented from month zero to month 12. Attach a screenshot of your table of values. An example of what is expected is attached. So this part, I'm not sure if it'll still be recording, but I'm gonna actually share my screen now for my computer. Let's see, share screen. Still recording. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to go to desmos.com. And I'm going to type in the equation we just had. The equation was, I believe, y equals 16. 1667 x plus 3667. So if we look, I don't have a table of value. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. And on my screen, there should be this like little gear. I'm going to click on it. And if I look, there's convert to a table. I'm going to click on convert to a table. But Ms. Townsend and I just said we want month zero to month 12. So Ms. Townsend, do we care about the negative one and negative two? No. So I'm going to just delete them. But here's what's nice. I go to my two and I just hit enter, 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 enter. And I keep on going until I get to 12. And now look, I have a nice table of values that shows me how much rent I've paid or fees I've paid in total for this apartment over a given year. Uh -huh. So what we would do is we would take a quick screenshot, just like this, and then we would import it to the Google form. Ms. Townsend, how bad is that? Not bad at all. Yeah, they didn't even have to type in the numbers zero through 12. I literally had to type it in last night. I didn't know if you could. So now I'm going to share my screen from my iPad. We would then attach the screenshot right here into the add file. And then we would go on to our next question. Ms. Townsend, can you read this question? Using Desmos, construct a graph, attach a screenshot of your graph. You must have two points plotted, one at x equals zero and one at x equals 12. An example of what is expected is attached. This is what's expected. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna share my screen now for my laptop. Share screen, continue. And if you look at our equations already graphed, but it doesn't look nice. Like even if I zoom out, it just looks like a straight line going up, correct? That is correct. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with it. I zoomed out and over here, there's a wrench. So I'm gonna change my graph settings. I'm gonna change my X axes. And this is what you can do for each of them. I'm gonna change my X axes to zero and I'm gonna go up to 12 because there's 12 months in a year. I'm now gonna change my y-axis to, let's do zero. And I'm gonna change it to say 25,000. Doesn't that look like a nice picture of my graph? That's a great picture of your graph. That's a great picture, it's beautiful. But here's the issue. If we looked at the visual on the Google form, it has a point plotted at zero comma something and 12 comma something. So we're gonna look at our table of values and see what happens at x equals zero and x equals 12. If I zoom in at x equals zero, what's my y value? 3,667. Good, so we're now gonna go down here to box two and we're gonna make zero comma 3667 and we're gonna click label. And that's all we're gonna do. So we now know that the point zero 3,667 is for this graph. We also wanna plot what happens at x equals 12 Ms. Townsend, what happens at x equals 12? It is 23,671. Perfect. And I'm gonna label it. And if I zoom out, boom, it's right there, the 12, 23, 6, 7, 1. And then you take a quick screenshot of this graph just like this. Or if you want, you can hit save your graph and you can export it as an image. And it would look just like that, that's totally fine. Or you can do a large rectangle and that's totally fine. That's completely acceptable for what is needed for the, that part of the Google form, right Ms. Townsend? That is correct. 
if you want, you can make it the lines thicker, that way you, they're darker, but nothing crazy needs to be done. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And then now I'll share for my iPad one more time. There's Ryan. Just never ending going back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Okay, so then we would attach the picture of our graph under the add file submission. And then you would click next. But if you look, I click next and I kind of go on to the next slide. And the reasoning is because everything is required. You have to attach a file. You have to attach a file. You have to write your answers. You have to write in everything in every single spot. If you don't, you aren't gonna be allowed to move on to the one bedroom or the two bedroom section, okay? And then there is one little thing at the very end where you're then gonna put all the graphs on the same grid, but the directions are very specific on what to do. And as always, if you have any questions, you can email myself, Ms. Townsend or Ms. Jimenez. Um, Ms. Townsend, do you think there's anything else we need to go over? Yes, this is due the Friday that we come back from break. So that will be February 26th. Yeah, February 26th. And then we'll start part before the following week. Um, and that'll probably be due two weeks after that. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Have a great day, ladies. See you on Zoom. See you soon, ladies. See you soon. More, stop recording.